welcome to PHTV Channel 4 in Palos Heights. I'm Sue Jankowski, and we are here with the Travel Show, which I hope you always look forward to because once a month we get together and we talk about fabulous places that you can dream about and make a reality, really, and go traveling with Kathy Janes, who's here today from Class Act Travel. You. And uh, she always brings us a, a guest. Thanks for being here. Today. Thank you very Kathy. much. Appreciate it. Nice to see you. And Kathy brings today uh, our friend, our new friend, Chuck Passwaters. Welcome, Chuck. Thank today. you. Nice to have Chuck here. He is going to tell us about Auto Europe and Acacia Holidays. I'm saying that right? Yes, Chuck? you are. Acacia Holidays. Yep. So uh, two different uh, groups that gives you twice the opportunity to choose something. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we're going to find out uh, a lot about what we can do to travel. I know everybody's thinking this time of year, you kind of had it with um, all the winter stuff. Yeah, 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 and yeah. spring is on the horizon, and it's not too late to plan your traveling. So uh, let's, let's start with Chuck, and um, let's talk about Auto Europe, which is A-U-T-O, like a car. So I'm guessing this is uh, a driving trip. That, well, it is, yes, it's in part, uh, although the name is kind of a misnomer because... Uh, Auto Europe has now evolved into basically a global company that does not only uh, car rentals uh, throughout the world, certainly in Europe, but they also do other things. For instance, they have uh, air service to Europe. Uh, uh, they have contracts with about 16 different airlines. Wow. So you can do the air with them, you can do the car with them, and they also have a a hotel uh, program with about 150,000 hotels oh, worldwide. Yikes. How can uh, so a few hotels? <laughs> well, the company was formed in uh, 67 years ago and uh, basically started out as a company that did car rentals to U.S. military people in Europe. I didn't know that. Yes, and okay. they basically uh, grew from there and become, became a company that uh, was doing car rental reservations for the travel industry. So travel agents can call Auto Europe and book a car rental uh, in Europe originally, and then that again evolved into uh, a global company. So There's just wow. one thing to throw in on the car rentals, and I'm sure you've run into this. If you're going to a country that does not speak English as their language, you need to get that international driver's license. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. There are some yeah. countries that don't require an international driver's license. However, there are countries that don't require an international driver's license, but if you happen to get stopped, then you'll get a ticket for not having an international driver's oh. license. Oh. It's just so worth it getting is it. Just yes. makes yeah. sense to get the And it, they're not expensive? License. No, they're not expensive at all. So uh, how do you go about that? Um you can get it from various sources. AAA does the probably biggest one, the yeah. biggest one yeah. to go to. That's the one we always tell it. people to yep. use is AAA. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, so it's worthwhile just going ahead and getting it. And it you're, is. You're assured. It is. Okay. Yes. Well, I had a client that I told him, please get the, the international driver. You just have it. Oh, my friend told me I didn't need it. I said, please get it. He said I didn't have to have one, that he never uses it. Okay, they wouldn't give him the car. Oh, no. They would not give them the car because they didn't have it. Oh, wow. So that's just a hint just to yeah. remember that part. If someone you know, recommends it, probably you should go get it. Just go that. get it. It's like, yeah. I think it was like $5 or something. It's something very reasonable. Yeah, I don't know what the cost is now, but it's... It, it's, but not, it's not like $300. No, it doesn't make sense no, not to yeah. get it. No, not at all. And okay. it's not like you have to go take a test or anything yeah, no. that way. No, you just go there and get it. Sometimes the friend doesn't know the same things that the expert oh, knows. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, we, maybe we run into that every once <laughs> in a while, yes. That you do. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, we, we, we want to go somewhere and we want to rent a car. Are people doing this because they want to be an independent traveler and they want yes. to just travel around and be part of the countryside. Yeah, which, which basically is the new trend as well, yeah. independent mm -hmm. travel. And then uh, people are looking for... Uh, it just in general, more. You know, they want more culture. They want more uh, connection to the people, and and uh, they want more service, uh, and so forth. So it's not. It used to be, and it's still quite popular. The motor coach tour that stops in various cities. It's a set itinerary, 
Well, people are now looking beyond that. Uh, you know, it used to be that you would get off the motor coach and go to a museum, and then you'd get back on the motor coach, and you'd go to a restaurant to eat, and people are looking for just wanting to do things uh, on their own and, and, I and think set their it, own itinerary. Yeah, and if they've done that part before, they want mm -hmm. to really immerse themselves in that culture and, right. and that you can do that with a car. Right, right. So uh, that's, yeah. That's so so do people have to then, um, you know, there's driving on the, what we consider the wrong side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that yes. sort of thing. Is there like a, like a little helpful uh, tips that they get when they kind of go through the Well, company? I think one of the things that's, uh, that Auto Europe has done and provided a great service with is that on our website, autoeurope.com, if, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a tab down there um, that says plan your trip. And down there, there's a wealth of information on things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, watch out in this country, or, uh, for instance, they even give you hints on traffic ticket situations in various countries. Really? Uh, there are some countries in Europe that have, well, several countries have different restrictions on being able to rent a car, age restrictions. And oh. we have all those countries listed and tell you what the restrictions are there as well. Uh, and also, by the way, one of the really nice things on that website is that underneath where it says plan your trip, there is a tab that says road trip planner. And we have 11 countries in Europe, actually one country in the, well, we have the United States. We mm -hmm. only have two drive uh, itineraries in the United States. But in Europe, for instance, in Italy, which is the most popular country, right? in, oh, mm -hmm. Italy is going to be, it's bursting at the seams. Oh, wow. This summer, I think there's going to be more Americans in Italy than there are Italians. <laughs> uh, but in Italy, for instance, we have I, somewhere around eight or nine, maybe 10 different drive itiner itineraries that you can look at, like Tuscany, for instance. You can pull up a drive itinerary for Tuscany. It'll give you all the stops. It'll give you the distances and time to, that takes to travel between stops. It will also give you a map of that itinerary that you can blow up and print. It will give you then each stop, each day that you, uh, or each stop that you go to, and what the important sightseeing or interest is in that stop. It gives you uh, all kinds of links to other things. So it's a great. Uh, it's a great program that we have. Oh, that sounds really yeah. fabulous. Yeah. And especially for those people who just want to do their thing and be independent, it, you know, you can wander around the countryside and never, uh, you know, come to what you wanted to come to if you don't have a, exactly. some sort of yeah. guide. You, just if people plan beforehand, uh, they'll be much better off than as you, they'll, they'll miss things that they should have, they'll wish they would have stopped here or stopped there. You know, when they get home, they go, oh, did you stop here? And people say, oh gosh, oh. I didn't know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 good. Yeah. So, uh, and then, we, well, and then I said Italy is, is really uh, the number one destination mm -hmm. in Europe for 2023. Greece is also coming up very strong. Spain is coming up very strong. Spain has been a big, Spain very, and Portugal both. Yeah, very popular. Really, they, they, I, yeah, I get a lot right now for Spain and Portugal. Just out of curiosity, is it because people have for the most part done the traditional European type locations and they're ready to you know, kind of go, because Spain and Portugal, they're a little bit more fringe of popularity, right, I would have exactly, thought. Right, exactly, yeah. And, um, but not really. Um, some of these have never been to Europe before, and, and this is what they pick. And it's okay. I yeah, mean, sure, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I, they're both very nice places to visit. I enjoyed Spain a lot when I went. I was quite a bit younger at that time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but it was very nice. Mm -hmm. I, so yeah, I, but why? I don't have a good reason. And I why don't. Italy is so popular right now? And, and what, well, Italy it? has always been quite popular. Uh -huh. It's just that there's this pent up demand because we missed two years. Yeah, you, you, and so, so all, out. all those people yeah, that yeah. wanted to go yeah. Yeah. are now going this year. Yeah, and yeah. so, uh -huh. I will tell you that uh, the airfares to Italy have bounced around. It's just unbelievable what's been happening to airfares. I have talked to uh, people that have gotten airfares for 
eleven hundred dollars. Uh, luckily, <laughs> that's a good price. Okay. Uh, and yet, I'm also hearing close to two thousand dollars for an economy round trip ticket yeah. from Chicago to Italy. I will point out, and I'm before uh, coming here last night, I wanted to look up some prices on mm -hmm. airfares just so I could tell your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was finding that, you know, once you get beyond the summer season, which there's hardly any flights available yeah, anyway, yeah. this fall the prices are going to come down uh, uh, drastically. As a matter of fact, oh yeah, I looked up a departure on uh, the 14th of September, coming back the 25th. Of September and it was twelve twenty one, which is which is not bad. And that's bad. round trip. That's round trip okay. from yeah. Chicago well, yeah, to Rome, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I that same uh, uh, itinerary for the next month, October, goes down again. So it's eleven. Uh, sorry, one thousand one hundred and seventy one dollars. No, that's, uh, that's really good. A month yeah. later. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, the prices so do plan, come down. You know, fall. if you can travel whenever, plan maybe. I, the fall is perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. It's the best time actually. Yeah. To go to Italy, yeah. especially. Oh so, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, and so. people here, you know, everybody likes Italian food. Everybody likes the wine. Everybody wants mm. to go to Tuscany. You know, so yeah, I can yeah. see why it's very yeah. popular. Yeah. And then uh, the company that I represent, uh, Auto Europe, also uh, in 2017, they purchased a company based here in Chicagoland uh, in Libertyville, Illinois, called Tour Crafters. And Tour Crafters was an Italian company that uh, does now all of Europe, but with a heavy emphasis on Italy. We, we still have our, uh, an office in, in Italy. Uh, and they put together those custom itineraries, those custom oh, programs. Okay. Would be, you know, you might want to call Kathy to put that together for you, uh, uh, and they can just again do any kind of an itinerary that you want. I, I printed out a couple of the things that they, a couple of the fun things that they can <laughs> add on to your program. For instance, here's a tour where you explore Chianti, the the area yep, of yep, Chianti, yep. Uh -huh. by electric Vespa. <laughs> oh, I mean, that'd be fun, yeah. Or here's like a uh, legendary Fiat 500 tour, which is that little Fiat oh, yeah. car oh, cute ones, in, yes. for the Florence area of Italy. Cool. Here's a, a, a tour that we add on. It's Naples, uh, Naples City and Street Food Markets. Those are, that, see, that'd be a We were talking yeah. about yeah. food. <laughs> food. Yeah. Well, the next one even is even, even better because it's estate and vineyards tour with lunch and wine tasting. Oh, perfect. So. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. And then cooking classes in Tuscany. Oh, and how fun that would yeah, be. Outstanding. I think yeah. that would Absolutely be great. Absolutely outstanding. Yeah. So they do all kinds of different things and can put those programs together with the special and people that want special interest uh -huh. cooking classes and so and forth. these pictures that you know the countryside <laughs> and stuff that you're showing and the and the foods are you know just yeah. you just want to go there yeah outstanding <laughs> yeah outstanding At one time one of the gals that worked for me um, she set up a tour in Rome and they did it on golf carts uh, oh, wow that would be fun it it was. Yeah. It was. But what they had to do, it was kind of like on a Sunday, so there wasn't too much traffic running oh, yeah. around the streets. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That, um, mm -hmm. you know, different countries drive uh, in different ways and exactly. they have their own um, way of style. doing it. Yes. And some of it is not like here. So, right. uh, yeah, you, you, you do have to be careful. You kind of yeah. be careful. So, they had golf carts, but I yeah. thought that was a real clever way yeah. to get around Rome. Yeah, that, that would and, be. Isn't that cute? Yeah, yeah I like that. Really cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and by the way, I mentioned uh, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, Italy, Spain, and, and Greece, uh, but Ireland is always very, very popular, uh, it's, and it is going to be in, in, and is already in 2023. Uh, so Ireland's another country. That's that's uh, those are the top four. Put, probably. Okay, put those mm -hmm. on your mm -hmm. list of places yeah. to go. Yeah, absolutely. And then river cruises in Europe, of course, are yeah. quite popular. Um, you, you know, there are those that, that, that most uh, people know about, agents know very well, Viking and, mm -hmm. and AMA and uh, Avalon, uh, river cruise companies. Uh, but my company, Auto Europe, uh, there's three companies in Europe that are Europe-based river cruise companies uh, that are not well known in the United States and they're trying to come into the U.S. market. So one of them is Riviera, that you can book through Kathy, through okay. Auto Europe. Okay. Uh, one, of the, one of them is called Riviera Cruises, yeah. okay. which is a British company. 
They've been in business for, I think, 35 to 40 years. A long time. Uh, yeah. They're not well known here, as I said, because they've never marketed in this area before. Uh, it, it's nice with Riviera because they're English, so the announcements on board are going to be in English. <laughs> that does help. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> so that that's helps. always nice. But one of the nice selling points to Riviera Cruises is that uh, they have set aside six cabins per departure for singles, so there's no single supplement. Great and idea. Very, yes, nice. uh, very few, if any other river Great. cruises do yeah. that. So yeah. if there's a single going to Europe and they want to do a river cruise, Ooh, yeah. this would be a good one to look into. That's a great idea. Yeah. It really is. It and really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then another one that we're helping out uh, is a company called Crazy Europe Cruises. C-R-O-I-S-I. -I. Crazy is a French company. They've also been in business for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and Crazy not only does Europe river cruises, but they also do Southeast Asia and Africa river cruises as well. But I think one of the neat things about Crazy is that they have, uh, they have some of the smaller 10 to 15 cabin uh, canal barges. You know, the other guys, oh, the ones I, I mentioned, Dama and Viking mm -hmm. and so forth, have the big boats, yeah. which there's hundreds of them now in Europe. Yes. But Crazy has the ones that can go onto the smaller rivers and canals. Oh, that's nice. And the nice. 10 to 15 cabin, uh, I think that, that would, would be, be cool. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of get deeper into the country that way, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the third one that we are uh, representing and helping out is a company called A Rosa, A R O S A, which is a German company. Uh, uh, river cruise company. Uh, but I will point out to you as well that um, uh, half or more of the clientele on those river cruises are from the, that country, so from Germany or oh. from France and so forth. So if people want to go and meet people from uh, another country, yeah, yeah. these would yeah. be great. Yeah, those you know? would be. Yeah. yeah, that sounds very yeah. nice. Talk so, about yeah. immersing yeah. yourself in the country yeah. on that. That would be really It really neat. would. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so. Cool. So anyway. Okay, so that's your, that is your auto. Auto Europe, Europe and, and, and tour crafters. Okay, yeah. and then the acacia holidays. What, what acacia holidays, about? acacia by the way is a tree, very prominent ah, in Africa, mm -hmm. the acacia tree. Oh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. And the, uh, the founder of our company, his name is Joshua Nira. The headquarters for acacia holidays is in Nairobi. Uh, and our founder, Joshua, uh, I think many people, certainly Kathy would know, a company by the name of Abercrombie and Kent, A and K for mm -hmm. short. And uh, Joshua used to run Abercrombie and Kent. So in uh, 2020, uh, oh, sorry, in 2000, not 2020, in 2000, Joshua left A and K and started his own company. So that's ah, Acacia that's Holidays. Okay. And they do, of course, the safaris throughout Africa. Ooh. Acacia actually does, uh, offers programs or packages from the north to the south. So everything from Egypt to Morocco to down to South Africa. But their headquarters, and we have an office in uh, Johannesburg as well. Uh, and then uh, our headquarters office is in Nairobi. However, we have a reservations office in Oak Park, Illinois. So the U.S. <laughs> reservations office is based here in, in the Chicagoland area. That's so, convenient. Yeah. Uh, and Africa is just an unbelievable uh, destination to go to if anybody's had that on their bucket list. It, and most people do. Uh, and if, especially if you love animals, it is the destination of a lifetime. I've been there four times and wow. absolutely love going. I can't wait to go back again. Uh, it's a very safe area. Uh, the food is absolutely outstanding in Africa and the people are wonderful. I have to tell this story. Uh, my wife uh, took my granddaughter to Africa about five years ago and uh, did a typical safari in Kenya. Uh, on, on the way home, my wife uh, asked our granddaughter, Mackenzie, uh, what did you like most? What, what was outstanding? What impressed you the most? And she said, the people. Oh. Which you'd think it would be the, the lions or the uh, yes, <laughs> hippos or correct. something. Yeah. And she said, the people. the people. She said, the people were just absolutely wonderful. Isn't so, that, that's, yeah. that's great that she got to meet the people and yeah. she felt that way yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I felt that way in Egypt when we were there, too, that the people couldn't have been nicer. They, they were so grateful for us to be there. The Antiochides police said, oh, we love the USA. 
it was such a different feeling than I thought we were going to get when we went. Yeah. yeah, that's nice to hear too. We love yes. the USA. Yes, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said too. That was great. I did pack peanut butter cookies and peanut butter crackers and whatnot in my suitcase, and I never ate them. I brought them back again because the food was that's that good. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it really was that good. That's good. What? So um, now, are these trips then planned through? Say you want to go on a safari. I know there's a lot of choices you can make for safari, where they're located and what you want to see, or the company involved. So does this um, company then kind of steer you in a certain way? Well, they are uh, a company that has the whole package uh, uh, completely uh, set up for you uh, from start to finish. From once you land until you get back on that airplane, it's, everything is taken care of by Acacia Holidays. And one of the nice things about Acacia that you don't find with all uh, safari operators, a lot of safari operators subcontract their services out mm -hmm. through other companies, but Acacia Holidays does not do that. Acacia owns their own vehicles, they have their own guides, they have their own contracts with the game reserves and lodges and so forth, so uh, it's complete control. You know, you lose control when things are, are uh, divided, divided up, up by, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but they do own their own. Yeah, that way you get the quality that you yeah. want to have yeah. in uh, a travel. The other thing that people have to watch out for in regards to going on a safari with companies is that um, y you have to know the vehicles, you have to know how many people they'll take, you'll have to know, you have to find out whether or not they're actually going to operate the tour. Some people will cancel their itinerary if they don't have enough people on it, and then you're high and dry oh, yeah. with dates that you've already set well, up and so forth, yeah. and, and they now say, what? I'm sorry, you yeah. can't go. We never do that. We will actually take out any safari as long as we have just two people, oh. as long as we have a minimum. That's we can't great. do it with one, Yeah. Uh, but although <laughs> depends on money, I guess. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but just we'll take it out with two people. That's great. Well, that's yeah. good really because is. that is that would be horribly disappointing uh, for people if they had their yeah. safari canceled, you know, that they were looking forward yeah. to. Yeah. But there, there are also companies when you find a really low price, you really need to check into what that is that you're oh. getting. It's sometimes not meals or some of the meals or a lot of the meals and sometimes it's even the, there's there's fees or permits that, that you have to pay to get into some of these game reserves. Well, even and, the lodging. And they aren't included with some of these companies. Yeah, even the lodging can be affected by that. Yeah, oh yeah, lodging too because there's different levels of lodging over there as well mm -hmm. but then even on the vehicle sometimes you'll they'll, people will use a minivan we would never do that we our, our safari vehicles are uh, Land Rovers and, and uh, discoveries and so forth so we use the best equipment the magic number for a group going to Africa on a safari is six because that's what a safari vehicle holds where everybody oh. has a window oh the oh. safari vehicles will sometimes hold maybe as many as nine people but if you if you're in the middle seat mm, you're yeah. not seeing anything you're not seeing animals yeah yeah because yeah. yeah, yeah, you're seeing heads so yeah. we people. would never yeah. we like we'd never take any more see. than yeah. six sometimes seven because there's six window seats behind the driver and the passenger uh, mm. uh, seat up front but the passenger seat is a window seat and we now have our newest vehicles all of our vehicles now have a pop-up in the on the passenger in the front as well as in the back for the others to stand up and take the oh, pictures and oh, so forth. Cool. You know, they all pop up roofs on mm -hmm. all these safari vehicles yeah. when you're on safari. Oh yeah, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, then you usually do a, a morning, an early morning game safari, uh, and then uh, in the late in the evening, you know, just before dinner is a good time to go out. During the middle of the day, all the animals are taking siestas yeah. anyway. <laughs> So we don't <coughs> usually go out in the middle of the day. Uh -huh. yeah. That sounds yeah. really exciting. That's incredible. So Chuck, we were just talking about Tanzania. Could you tell us a little bit more about that area? Yeah, Tanzania is again a part of that same ecosystem uh, with the Maasai Mara. It's, it's actually the Serengeti. And Tanzania is where Mount Kilimanjaro is. Uh -huh. uh, and there are lots of people that love to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. As a matter of fact, our Reservations manager in Oak Park, Illinois, has done that climb, wow. uh, and actually so has his mother. Oh and my I gosh. think she was 65 wow. uh, when she did it. Uh, so it's, it's, that's something to, that people want to do. It does take a while to do it. You have to get used to gradually the altitude change. Uh, 
uh, it's, it sometimes can take six or seven days to do the, the, mm -hmm. the climb on Mount Kilimanjaro that's, that's quite popular. Uh, and then the Ngorongoro uh, Crater in Tanzania as well. But I was going to point out too that, that if people are interested in animals, it is East Africa that they, they probably want to go to. South Africa has, of course, and we do South Africa as well. South Africa is kind of a combination of uh, the animals, but also Cape Town, which is absolutely a gorgeous city, and, and the beaches and the penguins and, and Table Mountain and so forth in South Africa. Uh, and, and, uh, but their gay reserves are a little different in that they're sort of fenced in and there's paved roads. You still oh. see the animals. Uh, but in Kenya and Tanzania, it's you're out in the bush, you're out in the yes. open, and you're Depends searching them down and so forth. What kind of experience yeah. you, you want to yeah. have? And yeah. everybody, of course, is uh, wanting to see the big five. Uh, the big five in Africa, the animals. It's the lion, the leopard, the rhino, the elephant, and the Cape buffalo. Those are the big five oh, animals that you uh, people want to want to look for. Um, and with my company, Acacia Holidays, we're doing something interesting. Uh, we started a few years ago. We're putting together, we're, we're taking our top five itineraries uh, uh, in Africa, and it's from Morocco to South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, and so forth, and we're putting together a group price but then we're letting travel agents book into that group price. So the travel oh. agent doesn't have to put together a group. We've put it together for them, and but I then your clients, get, your clients get the <coughs> advantage of a group rate, but you Perfect. don't have to form the group or the client doesn't Perfect. have to form the group. Oh, that's really nice. That yeah. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I'll give you an example of pricing on that. They're, mm -hmm. they're fairly reasonable. Everything's gone up over the last several years, but uh, we've got a, a, this is an eight day uh, mm -hmm. on the ground. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's a couple of days of travel uh, and this is the land price only, but it's really pretty much again from start to finish on the land, on the ground. Uh, it goes from $4,350 in the low and shoulder season up to $5,340 in, in the peak season. That's not terrible. And that's for eight days. That's air not fares, and it was something I mentioned, the airfares to Italy uh, mm -hmm. before, uh, they're actually lower to Africa than they are to Italy, really? even though uh, there are airlines where you have to fly into Europe and to go to, to Africa, yeah. but the price is cheaper if you extend on, which it doesn't make any sense. No. In fact, what airlines did I look don't up? don't make a lot of sense, guys. Yeah, here's, yeah. Uh, here was a May 27th uh, airfare for $1,316 from Chicago That's very reasonable. to Nairobi and back. That's so isn't very that interesting. Reasonable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That is. That's great. You can't. You yeah. cannot figure out how they price things at it, times. It's, it's you, nuts. You know, it's well, and it's just so fluctuating all the time. Yeah. Too, yeah. Just uh, during the day, even yeah. uh, somebody called in the morning for a price, and the afternoon has already changed already. Yeah. It's. it's you can't. Just. Yeah. T that's it. It'll be like. Um, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to change. Uh. Now, one of the interesting things in Africa, too, is the Great Migration. I don't know if you've heard mm -hmm. of the Great Migration. Yes. Basically, it's, the, it's basically based on food and the rainy seasons and so forth. So in the summertime, July, uh, August, uh, the animals are going from Tanzania up to Kenya. So they're mm -hmm. going from the Serengeti up to the Maasai Mara and crossing the Great River there. Uh, and there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of animals that do that, uh, mostly wildebeest. Uh, the wildebeest are the, the bulk of the migration, but there's zebras and things like that as well. Uh, and then there's a reverse migration in October, November, where they're then leaving Kenya to go back down to the Serengeti. The wow. reverse migration isn't quite as dynamic because they more like meander back, <laughs> whereas it's a stampede, yeah. you know, going uh -huh. uh, on the... Isn't uh, that, that's just a phenomenon, isn't it, it is. that it's that, that hundreds happens? Hundreds of yeah. thousands of animals. Yeah, that's something. Matter of fact, another interesting thing is, and we almost did, I almost did one of these tours in February, but didn't make it, of this year, is the birthing season. Birthing season is like mid-February, wow. where the wildebeest are, are giving birth. And there are actually around 8,000 births a day. Whoa! <laughs> a day. Whoa! Yeah, it's like. So you're pop, not, not going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to miss one. Yeah, yeah. So, super, super interesting. Lots, of, lots of unique opportunities. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely. Yeah. That is just really, really mm -hmm. interesting. 
they still. So, and then there's, of course, wine country in South Africa, which is very interesting. That's so, true. Yeah. I've had some oh, South yeah. African wine. Well, and then yes. uh, when you do South Africa, it's a good idea to not only, of course, do all that, and that would be normally included on a package to, in South Africa, it would be wine country in Cape Town, mm -hmm. and probably Kruger National Park, which is one of the big, bigger game reserves there. But then Vict it's very easy then to go up to Victoria Falls and then see the incredible waterfalls at Victoria Falls. Yeah. Well, and it's a really, really big place. You can see a lot of things yeah. there. You can keep yeah. going back as you have been doing. Yeah. So yeah. if you have uh, a desire to go to any of these places, and I don't see who doesn't really have a desire to do any of those Me? things. Sounds uh, like it you, sounds just super, just, yeah. You can get a hold of Kathy, and Kathy, tell us where, where you want to be. Please contact us at Class Act Travel. We're at 6946 West 111th Street in Worth on the corner of 111th and Worth Avenue. Phone number is 708-448-6560. We are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. If you need an evening, if you need a Saturday, please just call. We can set it up and we can be there. We were there this past Saturday for clients that came in that needed to book their vacation. So please, if you need it, we'll be there. All right? Thanks, guys. Sounds Appreciate it. Good. Chuck, before we go, any other thing you want to mention to our viewers about traveling? Uh, well, no. It, it, they're, they're, it need, people need to book early because yes. things are booking up, so don't wait. And don't wait on passports. Please yeah. don't wait on passports. They're very behind in doing passports again. So if, if you need it renewed, it has to be good for six months beyond your return date. Oh, Okay, yeah. good to know that. It has to be six yeah. months beyond the return date, and if it's shy, they, they won't take it. Okay. You've got to get it renewed, and please do it early because they are running really far behind in doing passports. Okay, well, word to the wise for everybody wanting to do some uh, traveling outside the U.S. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching us. I hope you enjoy traveling uh, soon and this summer, and maybe you'll get a hold of Kathy James. Anyway, we'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Thank you.